Greetings, I'm Shad, and I want to talk to you a little bit about time travel. You see, I'm a sci-fi nut, love it all, science fiction, and one of the themes in science fiction that I have always enjoyed is time travel. The unfortunate thing is, is time travel is rarely ever done accurately. Um, because, this is the thing, time travel is theoretically possible, alright? Uh, there's a couple of ways to look at it, uh, but when you really look at it, there are uh, a couple of ways you would assume time travel to work until you come to uh, one inevitable kind of conclusion. Now, you probably already know this, and if you're up on time travel, well, then, you know, you probably don't need a watch, but you probably might still enjoy the conversation. So, in regards to time travel, the first is, like, way to look at it is the uh, Back to the Future style of time travel, where you go back in time, you change an event, and when you return to the future, everything is changed because of what you've done. That, of course, falls apart horribly with paradoxes, all right? As soon as you change something in the past and you come to the future, well, what could happen? And, I mean, what if you say, what if you don't avoid change a paradox? The, the problem is, you always essentially would create a paradox for this reason. Say you didn't change anything that really affected you, okay? And you could say, well, no, Marty McFly, he's, he, ch he changes stuff that affects him. But say you went back in time, changed something that didn't affect you, you return to the present, that means you, the person that you meet, would still go back in time. But the future you've just come to is a future that exists based on the action that you've took in the past to change the past to create this new future. And so when yourself that you meet, when you return to the future, if you did not affect you, your circumstances to the point where you would still go back in time, all right, that person who goes back in time would then meet yourself because the future he traveled from is a future that exists purely on you being back in time. So there would be two of you back in time now, all right? And then if you both return, see what we're creating here? Paradox! And that's exactly what how Back to the Future would work. Uh, Marty McFly returns to the future, or well, the present, I should say, and he sees himself go back in time again. That version would again meet himself, which would then change the future again, and you get a paradox. And we're not even going into things that would affect your circumstances. So say you went back in time to kill your grandfather, your grandfather didn't exist, you wouldn't have been born, so therefore you wouldn't have been born to be able to kill your grandfather, therefore your grandfather did live, so therefore you would have been born, and therefore you're alive to go back in time to kill him. Again, paradox. So that that destroys the concept of time travel, but really that destroys the concept of time travel only if you feel you can change the past, all right? Now, the other thought of time travel with, uh, you know, uh, being able to change the past being considered, all right, is uh, parallel realities, okay? So when you go back in time, you change an event and you create a new reality that kind of runs, you know, um, parallel to the reality you came from. And when you go to the future, this new reality that you go to is a future that is built upon your actions of the past. That means you can never return to the, real the reality, the present, that you traveled from. And this is actually done in Dragon Ball Z's time travel with the Trunks storyline. And it's also done in the rebooted Star Trek, okay? Uh, Spock travel. oh no, um, uh, he, he gets thrown back in time, and the bad guy travels back in time to destroy Vulcan and all that stuff. Spoilers, sorry, too late. Anyway, they say it creates a new reality, and that avoids the paradox problem, but if you have alternate realities, there is a bit of a problem with the parallel reality theories, is that means everything that could possibly exist does exist in parallel realities, and that could also mean that there could be a reality that exists that can interact with the other realities and destroy them, and then for how do we exist, and it's just... Look, and I'm, I'm being fairly, you know, basic in regards to that. If you really want to go into detail, you can. But basically, time travel in regards to parallel realities eventually breaks down as well in a huge paradoxical mess. The way that time travel could only really work, and this is why it's my favourite, because it's the one that if time travel did exist, it would have to work this way, otherwise everything just falls apart, reality is gone. And that's the kind of view of time travel that you can travel in the past, but if you were to travel into the past, it would only be to relive events that have already transpired. You can't change it, you can only just play out things that have already happened. And that would make sense, okay? Because if you come from a present that is truly the result of the actions of the past, all right, your present can nowhere ever be different from the results of what happened in the past, even and that includes you having gone back into the past to do whatever you did. 
Same with trying to change events in the future. If you got a vision of the future and you and you saw a, a bomb explode and you know a city being destroyed, all right, you can't then take undertake any action to try and change it, all right. Only if it was a true vision of the future. You see, if it was a true vision of the future, that vision would have to be a result of every action that you would have undertaken as a result of seeing it. So therefore, it can't change. It could only change if it was a probability, a possibility, a prediction based on certain parameters and stuff like that. But no, if it was a true vision of the future, the true future, it could only be that future based on the actions that you've taken after seeing it. Otherwise, it wouldn't have been the real future. So the answer is you actually can't change the future or the past. And from a philosophical standpoint, that is the only, you know, theory of time travel that actually makes sense. Your present can only be the result of the past. No matter what happened in the past, including if that, if that includes you going back into it, your present past can only be the result of that. So therefore, you can't change it. You can only be replay the events that have technically transpired for other people, but not for you, if you had a role in it. There are very, very few movies who do this right, who actually use the really only possible theory of time travel that, if it was to exist, technically it can according to physics. And so the only way time travel actually does work, okay, or could work if we ever ended up being able to go back in time, the physics involved in that is very complex, but this is the only way it would ever work, okay? But that doesn't mean it's not the most entertaining. And actually, in my opinion, it really is because, oh, they're just the fun stuff that can happen as a result of that. In my opinion, the very best movie that has ever been done in on all of time travel that handles time travel perfectly well there, there is kind of a question even in regards to that, but we'll, you know, we'll get there. It's the movie called Predestination, I think? Predestination? Anyway, I'll double check and it'll be right there. Oh my goodness. Like, the most awesome time travel movie ever made. Or that I have ever seen to this point. Funnily enough, the other time travel, one of the other movies that do time travel perfectly, is actually Bill and Ted's Most Excellent Adventure. Um, I've only seen the first one more recently than I can't even remember though, that happened in the second one. But I have seen it years ago, but still I watched the first one more recently, the first Bill and Ted. And funnily enough, that actually did time travel mostly right. And it is because no matter what they don't do in the past, actually only fills in events that have already happened and especially when they're doing things in the future like they're in a trouble a, you know a difficult situation and then they say all right what if we were to do this to fix it what if in the future i steal your dad's keys and i place it behind that bush that would then give us the keys and they look and it's behind the bush <laughs> that's hilarious but that's actually how it would really work okay they would never need to go they would never be in this position where those keys weren't behind the, those bushes, okay? That reality technically couldn't exist because if you would ever do something in the future that would affect the past, sorry, I'm gonna, sorry. If you ever do something in the past, okay, that would affect your present, it would always be there in the present. There would never be a reality where it wasn't there. And so yeah, <laughs> Bill and Ted actually did time travel right, which is pretty hilarious, but there you go. But I said they almost did it right. You see, even with the correct version of time travel, there is another very important fact that most movies miss, okay? And even Predestination, if that's the right name for it, also gets this wrong. Now, this is really determined on how the process of time travel works, okay? Because we are traveling through time right now. We're traveling in the future at a set velocity. And because we're at a set velocity and we're traveling through time, we are affected by physical forces such as gravity, all right? This is important. You might not think it is important, but it is, okay? Because if you were to travel through the past and just go from point A to point B, bang, you're there, and you were to travel in the past, invariably you would always end up in the middle of space and you'd probably suffocate and die. Why? Well, because you're traveling through the past. You're traveling around along one single dimension of time. You're not traveling through space. You're traveling through time, okay? And if that happens, well, the Earth will be in a very different location in the past compared to the present. In fact, the Earth is constantly moving through space at a very, very high speed. Not only is the Earth revolving around the Sun, but the Sun is revolving around the, you know, center of the galaxy. And then the galaxy is also drifting, okay? Most movies show time travel as a, like, a blip, you're in the present, blip, you're in the past, okay? There was no traveling to the past. 
You see, if you were to travel to the past, you could rightly assume that you would be under the same effects of physics as we are as we travel towards the future, okay? Like gravity. And so if you were to travel to the past in a kind of line, a direction instead of an instant leap, okay, well then you could assume that gravity will hold you on Earth as you're going back into the past and when you come to the point of the past, or well, thank goodness you're still on Earth, you'd be in a different position in time because you'd be, sorry, you'd be in a different position in space because you would have been moving through space along the journey. And that is actually the only way time travel could work and if it's ever been if, uh, you know, time travel is ever used in fiction, this is the only way it should be portrayed. I mean, having said that, I love the parallel reality things, even though that does eventually break down. For fiction, it's just fun. But if you really want to portray time travel uh, accurately, this is the only way it can be done. Anyway, thank you for watching. It's just a bit of a fun little rant. And until next time, farewell.